Hello. First of all, I'm going to start by saying um, rest in peace, Brian Shira. Of course, from all the videos that I have watched, every clip, every person that interviewed you, t interviewed you, you looked like a very good person. <clears throat> but I don't want us to just bury you and not learn something from your story. So as a mental health advocate, um, and somebody who's really worked with children like you, orphans, street kids, and people who have not had significant others or people to guide you and walk with you. I want to say that I have something that I can learn and also maybe try to educate myself and others so that this doesn't happen again. I almost feel like very soon it's going to happen because there are so many people that are trolling your friends and people don't understand. And who am I to say that I really understand? I just want to take through somebody who cares to listen. Uh, what I have analyzed from the videos that I have watched. Um, this is a tragic story, but it has a good lesson. I want us to understand trauma and shed some light on the impact of trauma on mental health field and also in our com community, whether it is on TikTok, social media, YouTube, for Kenya and for the world. I called this complex PTSD and I'm going to tell you why. We know of PTSD because it's in this SDSM-5, which is the Diagnostic Statistical Manual. But we don't talk a lot about complex PTSD, which is what WHO goes with. I don't want to teach you everything that you already know. Um, PTSD is that is actually defined in DSM-5, um, but it is. Uh, but Sh uh, Shira did not only experience PTSD; he must have been going through some type of complex PTSD. It is not just PTSD because there was repeated, continuous trauma events that occurred in his case. So remember, if you have watched his video, if you have been very keen to watch his videos explaining himself through those interviews, you see that there was abuse. This boy, this young man had a lot of anger, self-perception that was, you know, shame, guilt, hopelessness. His experiences of loss, lost his mother at his, at such a very young age when he was eight years. Loss of, um, you know, opportunity to finish his school because he was in college and he dropped out because of his financial struggles. He talks about how he was raped in a video, he talks about how he got raped and he, contra he contradicted HIV and he got the diagnosis. Somebody made money out of that diagnosis. He talks about his fame, rejection. I just watched the note that he had written saying that he was alone. That note that Baba Talisha was showing as they were moving his stuff from his apartment. You know, this young man really he had to deal with this and how did he deal with it you know he must have covered everything that he was experiencing with substance abuse you know if you can all remember or if you have watched his videos were just demonstrating his talent and not just his talent but his use of alcohol he was holding cups when he was talking. He was intoxicated. You could tell he was crying. He was showing some type of 
substance abuse. And we all missed it. Or maybe we knew that he was taking care of that. So there are places, there are some videos that he's talking about. He's going to check himself in into a rehab for three months. He knew that he needed rehabilitation for that. He knew that he needed to see a psychiatrist. He said that constantly in his videos. This man was fighting what we would call depression. Depression goes with the complex PTSD. Repetition of events that were tragic in his life must have led Mr. Shira into depression. I am not saying this because I am the expert or the expert of all experts, but I am saying this because I think we all can agree with what Shira was going through. So in complex PTSD, although it is not officially in DSM-5, as I, as I said again, um, it is in, the, in another manual that is provided by WHO, um, Shira had all the symptoms to show that he was experiencing prolonged trauma, repeated trauma with all the things that I have talked about, the loss of his mother, the financial struggles, dropping out of school. He had a court case that he was that was pending. The shame, the guilt that he had to cover behind this face and the smile. And people didn't see it. We failed to see it. So Shira's journey is really like an example of the challenges faced by many individuals who endure repeated amount of trauma. So as we explore, as I try to explore this story and this case, I want you guys to keep in mind Mkono Moja Hauguzi Hauguzi Mwana meaning one hand alone cannot nurse a child. He only had his grandmother from what I heard and maybe some TikTok followers and TikTok friends. It emphasizes the importance of community support in times of need and Shira was in great need. Shira's experiences with the loss of his mother leaving him emotionally vulnerable and struggling to find his place in this world after he gained that instant, you know, celebrity um, version of him after he witnessed another tragic event which was witnessing people in a tragic accident who had lost heads. He narrated that in his videos or his interviews. Despite the efforts of well-meaning individuals within his community like Nyako, Babatalisha, including his friends who supported him, and I'm glad that he's, he talks about his auntie who passed on, had paid for his school fees and he couldn't find money to pay his school fees or, or buy food. And he constantly had to do things like washing clothes for other people. The absence of a maternal figure must have left a void in this young man that couldn't easily be filled. He navigated through adolescence alone. Shira faced numerous challenges, including financial struggles and the trauma of sexual abuse, despite the efforts of those who tried to help him. Again, I know there are people who reached out to help him, the social workers and counselors. The cycle of trauma definitely seemed relentless. And I can only imagine what this young man faced even in his final moment. You know, his diagnosis of HIV further compounded the sense of hopelessness, knowing that his mom had died from the same illness and isolation. Maybe the diagnosis was kind of like giving him, um, you know, another marker that his life was probably going to be ending soon, making it difficult for him to see a way out of this despair, even as he experienced the moments of fame and acceptance, they were quickly overshadowed by rejection and feelings of inadequacy. So throughout his life, he exhibited symptoms commonly associated with PTSD. As I said, PTSD is in the DSM-5, but 
not complex PTSD, which I don't know why, because PTSD is just one event, you know, tragic accident you experience and you move on and you have to, you know, suffer throughout triggers and um, avoidance of this uh, event. But this, we're talking about several events that he had to go through. You know, the anger must have contributed to the self-destructive behavior severe depression these are some of the symptoms that we see in clients or patients who are dealing with ptsd so despite the best intentions of those who try to support him with money giving him money to pay his rent or including mental health professionals and community leaders the road to healing was very challenging for um, sheila this was a very challenging life story we reflect on his story let's not assign any blame on anyone but rather use this case as a case study to learn and change how we address such issues in the future let's thank those who tried to help him again let's let's thank them and we see some of them being recognized we acknowledge their efforts and we recognize the importance of their work even now so thank you so much for any, anyone that contributed or reached out to him. But what can we do better as a community? How can this story of this young man, so talented, yes, yet probably had a mental disorder that he had to deal with because of the trauma, because of, I am not diagnosing this man because I am not in the right place to diagnose. I am just a marriage and family therapy candidate who is trying to um, get my licensure. So this is not a, a this is not a diagnostic video. I'm not giving this man, young man, a label. But do did, can we see some patterns that can tell us that this boy probably had so, social anxiety? How comes that every time he had an interview, he was intoxicated? How comes when he, you know, very, very few interviews that he did look sober. But most of the other ones that I have seen on video, whether those people intended to just make it look like that, there's a pattern. Maybe he felt brave and confident and that's the only way he masked his shame, his guilt, his self-perception was masked by the alcohol. So the alcoholism was a cure, was a cure for Brian. So Brian drinks, he feels alone, he feels lost, he drinks, he's kicked out of a club. At night, he is running to his home because he can't pay a motorbike fee. And then he meets his death when he was hit by a car. Such a sad ending. It feels like it feels like it is we are we have been left in suspense. What else could have been waiting for Brian if he had received the services that he needed to rehabilitate him and to work with him and give him life skills and pay for his college and encourage him and just what someone needs when they are sick is what he did not get. So money doesn't pay everything. Money doesn't provide everything. So I am saying this and I hope to continue educating myself and even other people that need to learn. And just as I end, stop. Stop judging people. Stop trolling people. Stop bullying people on social media. Because if you do, and maybe they are going through struggles traumatic events, childhood trauma, whatever they are going through, trying to find a niche in social media, trying to fit in, trying to make a life out of maybe whatever they have in their hands and you troll them and you bully them and you call them female and they are male and you call them male and they are female and you judge them and you haven't listened to their story. Um, it's wrong. Let's stop it. Kenyans, we can do better. We can do better for Sheila. 
we can do better. This is a lesson. It's tragic. Thank you so much for listening.